Here we can note rather weak cooling systems and, what is especially unpleasant, radiators. For gasoline engines, this has become a real problem. In addition, problems with failure of thermal fuses and radiator fan resistors regularly occur, and in winter the fan can become jammed by compacted snow. So overheating in cold weather is Peugeot's trademark. The antifreeze level sensors in the tank fail massively, soldering helps them. There are also failures of the fuel pump relay on cars with mileage under 200,000. The unpleasant nuance is that the relay is soldered into the BSM unit, which is why eliminating this problem is either expensive or requires frankly collective farm repair methods. Well, the engine mounts also turned out to be quite weak, and they already have to be changed after driving for 100,000 kilometers. Gasoline engines here are of two families, 1.6 liter naturally aspirated before restyling and 1.6 liter supercharged Prince series and 1.2 liter PureTech series. Let's start with Prince. It's good that only quite late versions of these engines were installed on the Peugeot 3008. And it's bad that even with modified engines there is enough trouble. It's a shame that a six-speed automatic transmission was only paired with a supercharged engine, and there are a lot of such cars in the population. I already wrote a whole article about these motors, and everything said there about the upgraded EP6C is relevant for the princes on the 3008th. The problems are familiar, a small resource of the timing and pump, oil appetite, the constant threat of valve seats falling out and leaks, leaks, and more leaks. Both oil and antifreeze flow through all seals and squeezed out plugs. This motor requires careful and frequent maintenance, as well as very competent service. But the owner usually finds out about this after they explain to him that the motor is easier to replace than to repair. A surprising number of owners still believe that the naturally aspirated chain-driven engine is the epitome of reliability and that BMW engineering is infallible. I hope you will no longer fall into this trap and check all the weak points of the motor when buying, and during operation you will remember that you need to fill in high-quality oil and change it often, and that it is necessary to reduce the temperature by flashing or modifying the thermostat and the fan switching unit. Motors 1.2 PureTech, which appeared after restyling, come across extremely rarely. Their design is very unusual and, oddly enough, quite reliable. In fact, there is only one serious problem, the belt is in an oil bath, and by a run of over 100,000, it begins to collapse, clogging the oil receiver with its remnants. The valves usually do not bend, but the engine cannot live without oil pressure. Finding a car with a 2-liter diesel engine of the DW10 CTED 4 Series is no easier than finding a hybrid one. The motor is not bad, but if you wish, you can find weaknesses in it. First of all, it is worth noting the presence of an intershaft chain in the timing drive and the limited service life of it. Many people change only the belt, but after 150,000 kilometers the chain slips and the cylinder head of the engine breaks. The second big trouble is the not very successful work of the particulate filter and EGR. On engines with runs over 150,000 leaks, burning errors and a clogged intake occur quite regularly. The fuel system is also quite capricious, which adds problems to the piggy bank, but there are no other serious troubles in terms of the mechanical part. Of the frivolous, I will only note the limited resource of the crankshaft damper pulley. These motors are loved for high power, good forcing, and overall resource. In neighboring countries, this engine is quite common, and there are many services that specialize exclusively in engines of this series. And in Russia, the bulk of diesel engines are 1.6 liter DV6C or DV6 TED4 engines. The first engine is 8 valve and was installed after restyling, but the second is 16 valve and was installed before it. This is not a mistake, the drive of the second camshaft on 16 valve engines before restyling was carried out by a chain, and this was a constant headache for the owners. When the mileage exceeded 150,000, it began to wear out and began not only to make noise, but also to threaten to slip and even break. The motor was greatly simplified, while this did not affect the power. Diesels after restyling have become not only more reliable, but also a little more powerful. In addition, 
Early 16-valve diesel engines regularly encountered problems with the air metering system, a system necessary for the operation of the particulate filter and EGR. After restyling, the problem was almost completely eliminated, but you can read in more detail about the shortcomings of this line of engines in the Citroën C4 Picasso review. The braking system on the Peugeot 3008 is nothing special. In terms of components, it is fully compatible with the brakes of other Peugeots, starting with the Peugeot 307. On cars with naturally aspirated engines, the front discs are 283 millimeters on supercharged gasoline, 2 liter turbo diesel, and the most powerful variants of 1.6 liter diesel, 302 millimeters. Behind are 267 millimeters discs, common for the French automobile industry, combined with a hub. The parking brake is everywhere electric, typical of the French system, with a gear motor pulling the cables. Resource discs and pads without surprises. They serve for a long time, or even a very long time, on the original components, the front discs can cover more than 150,000 kilometers. However, in life, their resource suffers from errors in operation or neglect of maintenance. The front calipers are the simplest, with a floating bracket. They require minimal maintenance, and after 7 to 10 years of operation, they will ask for an easy bulkhead with the replacement of piston seals. But the caliper fingers are often changed earlier. The rear calipers have built-in helical parking brake mechanisms, which, if you do not use the handbrake, regularly turn sour. On older machines, shaft seal corrosion is often encountered, and cables are increasingly stretched. However, these are relatively common, but minor problems. But it's worth checking the serviceability of the handbrake gear motor. A new one is very expensive. It fails both when the seals are damaged, the plastic case is warped and cracked, or the stem is soured, or simply due to wear and aging of the lubricant, wedging of the cables and the tubes, and similar trifles. If the gear motor tightens the brake for too long or a crunch is heard during its operation, then it should be checked more carefully. And at the same time you need to see if there is an unlock key in the trunk, there is a hole for it under the driver's seat. The suspension of the front wheel drive versions is strong and almost indestructible. All elements are familiar, strong racks and screw and ball joints here from the Peugeot 307 and Citroen C4. From them are the front levers. Attention is mainly required by the rear arm support, which rarely lasts more than 60,000 mileage. When replacing ball bearings, be careful, they must be fixed in a tightened position, and the removal procedure according to the manual is unnecessarily complicated. A chisel and hammer often solves the problem faster than the regular method of removing the post and unscrewing it in a vise. The service life of the strut and ball joint support exceeds well over 100,000 kilometers, but the stabilizer struts are consumables. But in general, the design is still successful and inexpensive. At the rear of the front wheel drive 3008s there is a simple beam, and there is nothing to break there. Beam supports serve under 200,000, and of the little things, only shock absorber bushings often require replacement. And then only on cars that often drive loaded on bad roads. Cars with an anti-rolling DRC, dynamic rolling control, system have difficulties with the price and life of the shock absorbers. By 120 to 150,000 runs, they begin to fog up and leak. Sometimes, with runs up to 100,000, they were changed under warranty, but now there is no chance of such luck. The rear suspension of the hybrid version is more complex. There is a very developed subframe that serves as the basis for the electromechanical transmission and battery pack. And the suspension of such machines is multi-link. However, there is no chance to find such a machine in Russia, just as there is no reliable information about the design resource. In general, the suspension is similar to the rear suspension of the second generation Citroen C5, and there it is quite reliable, and its only weak point is the camber arm. There is nothing unusual in the steering. Like other machines on the PF2 platform, there is an EGUR with a very reliable rail and a fairly reliable pump. Pumps of this generation have so far had a minimum of problems with seal leaks and breakdowns in control electronics. 
The wiring harness is laid on it better than on earlier models, and it frays extremely rarely, mainly after unsuccessful body repairs. Leaks in the system are also very rare. The pump works neatly and, if the control system is in good condition, does not overload the rail. The main thing is not to forget to change the oil at least once every 50,000. Small backlash and knocks can be annoying in the steering column, but the reasons for their appearance may be different. And in addition to the obvious check of the cardan shaft, it is worth checking the tightening of the column mounting bolts. The casing of the hole in the body sometimes flies out of its place, and if the noise level in the car rises, be sure to look at the driver's feet with a flashlight. Non-hybrid versions do not have any serious flaws in the design of the transmission. The splines do not rust, the bearings are quite reliable. Even a slightly weak bearing of the intermediate bearing of the drives will almost certainly pass its 150,000 mileage. As usual, there are difficulties with replacing CV joints individually, they are not officially on sale at all, there are only their covers. At the same time, external CV joints are available, but there is a problem with internal ones, and they have to be selected from old models. Or if the glass of the tripod is not broken, then just restore. Mechanical boxes for Peugeot 3008 may be different. The ML6C series MCP, aka BVM6, was installed with diesel engines, the B4R box was paired with gasoline engines, including supercharged ones, it is weaker and holds a moment of only up to 270 newton meters. The main problem that 3008 owners face is not the manual gearbox itself, but the operation of the shift cable drive. In our climate, it can freeze and wedge, so the cables need to be checked regularly and filled with grease under their shirt. On B4 boxes, there are difficulties with the wear of the switching mechanism itself in the manual gearbox. This occurs mainly with runs over 200,000, so it is on 3,008 that, due to the relative youth of these machines, such problems are very rare. There were also several options for automatic transmissions for the 3008. The classic automatic is the AM6C, Eisen's hydromechanical six-speed, better known as the TF80SC and found in Volvo, Land Rover, Saab, Opel, Ford, and Mazda. On the Peugeot 3008, it was paired with 1.6 THP engines and 2-liter diesel engines until 2013. This is a completely reliable automatic transmission, which in fact has only three weak points. The main feature of the box is that its valve body does not tolerate dirty oil. Channels and solenoids wear out easily, you just have to tighten it with an oil change, polluting it with active starts with slipping of the locking clutches in the gas turbine engine, and after tens of thousands of kilometers the box will never be the same again. And its complete restoration is expensive. Another problem turned out to be extremely constructive, almost until the very restyling, boxes with the old design of the main shaft ceiling rings and pressure leakage to a whole group of friction clutches come across. Well, the last trouble is overheating due to an initially weak cooling system and a clogged heat exchanger. On diesel engines with a remote thermostat, the situation is not so terrible, but with the hot temper of gasoline engines, the box has a very hard time. This exacerbates problems with the first two factors and adds to the chances of rubber pistons breaking and o-ring shrinkage. With regular oil changes, automatic transmissions of this series are quite reliable. Even if you change the oil every 60,000, but do not anneal, then it will almost certainly pass its 200 plus thousand mileage. At the same time, a car with such a box is quite comfortable and economical. The MC Series box with the code 20GE53 is the younger sister of the 6-speed automatic transmission. This is also Eisen, but TF70SC slash TF82SC is a lighter and improved version of the previous TF80SC with an electric pump and reduced dimensions. And in general, with the same problems. Unless the shaft seal rings here are always of a new type. They put it after restyling in a pair with 1.2, 1.6 THP engines and diesel engines. And on the hybrid version of the Peugeot 3008, it has been installed even since 2011. A characteristic feature of such a box is the presence of a start-stop system in the car. 
A small difference in the maximum transmitted torque is not very relevant for motors without tuning, but in general this version of the box is more reliable and stable than the old one. With a 1.6 liter diesel engine, a 6-speed EGS6 robotic transmission comes across before restyling. This is a single clutch box with a quick-acting electrohydraulic shift mechanism developed by Magneti Marelli. This is a fairly advanced version of the robot, but even it cannot compete in ease of use with pre-selective boxes and classic automatic transmissions. You can read more about maintenance issues in the article about the Citroen C4 Picasso, where this transmission is much more common. All-wheel drive here is exclusively electric and is vanishingly rare. There is little objective data on the reliability of such a system, but it can be said that so far there are no particular difficulties with battery life and electronics failures. The mechanical part is also quite successful. As in all other cars on the PF2 platform, both galvanized sheet and plastic are used in the body of the Peugeot 3008. Sheets of body metal are one-sided galvanized, but a good study of the body allows you to keep the metal mostly intact and the age of these cars is still far from advanced. Most corrosion manifestations from the outside should be looked for literally with a magnifying glass. Small chips above the windshield and on the edge of the roof almost do not bloom. The edges of the arches also have a minimum of damage, and if there were no body repairs, then the chances of seeing corrosion are minimal. In the oldest specimens from Moscow and St. Petersburg, corrosion may appear on the inner edge of the arch, but it will not be visible from the outside for a long time. It is worth taking a closer look at the door hole plugs and the molding on the threshold, the attachment points of which spread like red blots on cars from humid regions. The molding on the door is fixed a little better, and on the doors you only need to inspect the inner wrong side in the places where the rubber seal fits and all rubber inserts. The chances of finding rust somewhere else on an unbeaten car are close to zero. An inspection from below reveals that the machines are far from being as perfect as they appear from the outside. The steel still rusts, but the manufacturer hid all the problem areas away, where you can only get there either with the help of a lift or by dismantling the covering panels. Quite a lot of corrosion can be seen on the underbody brackets and in the rear around the fuel tank. This is the norm, the metal is not covered by anything here, and only the seams are covered with a layer of sealant. Small sores of surface corrosion can be found in those parts of the body where ventilation is poorer and which do not warm up. But in general, the picture is similar to the one that can be seen in the Peugeot 307 and 308, but at an earlier stage. And we can say that 3008 still has five years to really deep corrosion. Unfortunately, most owners do nothing to correct the situation, and almost no one does anti-corrosion bottoms and hidden cavities. This is bad, because here the nut is also prone to rot from the inside. This is noticeable on specimens that have undergone body repairs. For such machines, the threshold is cut off and replaced with a repair one. A rusty threshold booster and its lower edge from the inside are rather the norm, and in five years the thresholds will begin to be changed as massively as on the Peugeot 307. In the meantime, no traces of internal processes are visible from the outside, they prefer to ignore this danger. The very dense construction of the front end creates a funny problem, debris in the form of branches and rotten leaves sometimes accumulates on the body cups, and small points of rust can be seen along the edge of the pillar support and on the nearest body seams. In addition, the foam inserts of the panel under the windshield have a bad habit of accumulating moisture and rubbing the metal of the body a little, which ultimately leads to the appearance of several small pockets of corrosion. It is difficult to see this area, but it is highly recommended. In the doorways, inspect the thresholds under the rubber seal. Rust in these places will tell you that there are already problems inside the threshold. A large windshield is not only an excellent view, but also an increased chance of getting chipped. After 150,000 runs, the glass is noticeably rubbed off. For the sake of passive safety in collisions with pedestrians, it is made soft, and Chinese glasses are noticeably tougher. Glasses in the side doors of smokers are scratched easily and naturally, and by the mileage of 200,000, the driver's glass usually has noticeable vertical stripes rubbed with a sealant. Lensed headlights burn out, 
and on cars before restyling, they usually shine very conditionally. Most of the cars have optics with a simple reflector, and the headlights will be overwritten at most. True, Peugeot does not like owners very much, so it will be difficult to replace the DRL bulb yourself. There is no need to talk about the fact that chrome elements in our climate do not last long. The poor choice of chemistry during car washes and the usual road chemistry lead to the fact that all the shiny elements gradually become matte. For cars and simple trim levels, this is not a problem, but the 3008 has Arab versions on which even mirror housings and all door moldings have chrome trim. For them, our climate is a real disaster. However, many items can be bought on Chinese trading floors for same money. The foam seal on the water deflector panel under the windshield tends to freeze to the hood in winter and often comes off when the hood is opened. A funny feature of the Peugeot 3008 is associated with windshield wipers. They have a motor for each brush, and the front ones are synchronized only by wires. The left one is the leader, while in general their work is tied to onboard electronics. In case of any violations in the electrics, failures of the BSI unit or banal corrosion of the connectors of the gear motor itself, when the ignition is turned on, the wipers will rush about like crazy. The Peugeot 3008 has such a nice option as keyless entry. The side door handles are quite reliable, and although some of their breakdowns occur, they still did not become massive. But the rear door could have the option of opening from the foot. The sensor recognized the waving of the foot under the rear bumper. And just this sensor is now usually no longer working. There are few cars with keyless entry and mostly late copies, so the statistics on such malfunctions are small, but they hint at the existence of a design miscalculation. Well, it is worth noting that the original key fobs wear out surprisingly quickly. The body of the key fob has to be changed after five years of operation, the buttons on it sag, and its coating is scratched. Fortunately, Chinese key cases are inexpensive and there are no problems with replacing them. A very high quality interior at one time was a great advantage of the Peugeot 3008 over German minivans and crossovers of the same price category. It has everything. A nice design, excellent workmanship of all elements, an excellent uniform style, and a bunch of soft plastic. In addition, the interior is quite comfortable. True, only if there is quiet rubber and it is warm outside, on spikes and in the cold season, the interior upsets with poor sound insulation of arches and squeaks. Well, let's make allowance for the fact that the French have a very mild winter and they have already forgotten about our frosts. Of the Frank Minuses, one can name very weak original steering wheels, which already by 50,000 kilometers looked as if the car had passed all 300, leather peeling off in patches, bald spots, and rubbing. The steering wheels were changed under warranty, and the replaced ones serve normally even for runs over 200,000, they look shabby, but nothing more. The most ridiculous and serious problem is getting wet and falling off felt mats for soundproofing the trunk. They are glued to the body under the panels of the side covers of the trunk lining and eventually get wet and fall down. And just under them are the louvers for interior ventilation. As a result, the 3008 climate system stops working normally, the fan howls, but does not create airflow, and when the windows are opened, the air begins to exit the car with noise. You can solve the problem in 5 minutes, but you need to know what happened and what to do about it. Breakage of the electric handbrake button is a massive problem, but it is also solved quickly and cheaply. Otherwise, everything here is premium quality, except for the leather of the seats. Fabric seats hardly notice wear at all, and only in cars with mileage much over 200,000, the driver's seat begins to rub at the seams. And in rare cars with leather, the seams are hairy already by 100,000 mileage. The scratchy glove box lid is rather just a feature associated with the use of soft touch plastic and the ergonomics of the model. The climate in the absence of problems with felt mats that have fallen on the ventilation blinds does not cause problems. By a run of 150,000 kilometers, you need to be prepared for the fact that the fan will start to make noise due to wear on the brushes and collector. The stove flows only if it is unknown what is filled in the cooling system instead of antifreeze, and the motor is overheated, radiators cannot withstand this, neither the main nor the stove. 
The air conditioning system is solid, and if the car has not been in an accident, then the most likely cause of its failure will be a clutch malfunction or simply the lack of pressure in the system. You have already noticed that I mentioned the BSI block. Together with him, there is another important block under the hood BSM, and I talked about how much trouble they cause in the review of the Peugeot 307-308 and the first Citroën C4. By the time the 3008 was released, the main problems had been solved, the stability of the onboard network had been achieved, but you need to remember the main features of the PSA electrical system on the PF2 platform. The tightness of the BSM block under the hood is very conditional. It is not in vain that it says do not wash. It is afraid of water even after a serious improvement in waterproofing. So you need to be careful with puddles, with washing the engine compartment and things like that. The block, as part of the fight against corrosion, was made even less maintainable, and the relays are still soldered into the main board, including the fuel pump power relay. If it fails, there are several options for solving the problem. Look for a suitable BSM unit and flash it, open the old one, or hang up an external relay, if possible. It's good that such a malfunction is more typical for cars with mileage over 200,000, and the bulk of 3,008 only comes close to these numbers. The BSI unit here almost does not cause trouble at all, but the strange work of the wipers, the failure of the light and signaling, these are all his tricks. It is expensive and troublesome to fix, especially if the dealer does the work. It is better to find PSA specialists who untie blocks and know how to transfer configuration data from a new block to a used one. On gasoline cars, the small resource of the generator is not encouraging. Already by 100,000 mileage, its bearings and brushes are decently worn out, and the reader regulator can last even less. For this, you should say thank you to the hot temper of the motor. There are many complaints about the rapid aging of batteries. I already mentioned the handbrake button and the complex wiper system above, but besides them there are other, smaller electrical faults. These are punctures with wiring to the ABS sensors of the rear wheels and overheating of the head unit of the top multimedia system due to dust and aging thermal paste and malfunctions of the left steering column switch in which the cable breaks and loss of the Bluetooth signal on some versions of radio tape recorders and falling out pixels on black and yellow displays. All this is not very expensive to solve. Almost all the elements are in the Chinese version, but the hassle with them is inevitable. And the more fancy equipment the car has, the more problems there will be. Luckily, most of the cars are empty as a drum, and at best they have automatic climate control, a panoramic sunroof, and a large screen instrument cluster. And keyless entry, rain sensors, electric seats, and everything else is a rarity.